In this lecture, we will be covering chapters 31, 32, and 33. Chapter 31, Introduction to Business Organization. Let's talk about our learning objectives. First, a, a sole proprietorship is a business carried on by one person who directly owns the business. It has the advantages of flexible management and ease of organization, but has the significant disadvantage of unlimited liability of the owner for the debts of the business. Secondly, the purpose of a partnership is to operate a lawful business. This can be done through an ordinary or general partnership, a limited partnership, or a trading or non-trading partnership. The partners in a partnership could be general, silent, secret, dormant, or nominal. Third, the limited liability company form of business organization is important because the liability for members is limited to the amount of their investment and members can choose different tax classifications for the business. A sole proprietorship, again, is a business owned and carried on by one person who is known as the proprietor. The proprietor of a sole proprietorship owns every asset of the business. A sole proprietorship is very simple to begin and also very easy to end. The major advantages of a sole proprietorship are flexible, flexible management and ease of organization. The most significant disadvantage of the sole proprietorship is unlimited liability. Although a, per, a proprietorship also suffers from limited management ability and limited capital. On the other hand, a partnership is an association of two or more people who have combined their money, property, or labor, or a combination of these as co-owners for the purpose of carrying on some lawful business for their joint profit. Partnerships are classified as ordinary or general partnerships, limited partnerships, or trading and non-trading partnerships. Any person who is competent to contract may be a partner. Members of a partnership are classified as general partners, those openly engaged in the business as partners. Silent partners are those who take no part in the business. A secret partner is one that is an active partner but is unknown to the public. Dormant partners are those who are both silent and secret. Nominal partners are those who hold themselves out as partners but do not share in the management or profits. The partnership type of business may lead to greater profits through increased capital, more efficient labor, and improvement of management over sole proprietorships. However, there are several disadvantages to a partnership. Again, unli unlimited liability of each partner for the debts of the firm. The relative instability of the business the divided authority which may lead to disharmony. A joint stock company is a special type of partnership created by statute or as common law associations. Joint ventures are joint undertakings for profit 
that have most of the features of a partnership but are not so classified since they are for a single undertaking. A limited liability partnership is like a, par a limited partnership except all partners may have limited liability and normally do not have liability for other partners' negligence or misconduct. A limited liability company is a type of business organization that combines the management features of a partnership with limited liability for its members. Limited liability companies are important because they offer members limited liability and the flexibility to choose how the company will be classified for tax purposes. In rare occasions, courts will pierce the corporate veil and hold members who have ignored the limited liability company liable. Okay, let's go over our chapter 31 summary questions. Question one, what is required to form a sole proprietorship? The law does not require any formalities to form and operate a sole proprietorship. An individual simply needs to begin doing business. Question two, since a sole proprietorship is owned and run by one individual, does this mean only one person can participate in the business? Although a sole proprietorship is owned and run by one individual, the business may have any number of employees and agents. Question three, what are the advantages and the most serious disadvantages of a sole proprietorship? The advantages of a sole proprietorship are flexible management and ease of organization. The most serious disadvantage of the sole proprietorship form of business is the unlimited liability of the owner for the debts of the business. This means that business debts are payable from personal as well as business assets. Question four, can a limited partnership be formed just as easily as a sole proprietorship or ordinary partnership? A limited partnership cannot be formed as easily as a sole proprietorship or ordinary partnership because a limited partnership cannot be formed without a specific state statute prescribing the conditions under which it can operate. Question five, why is it important to distinguish between a trading partnership and a non-trading partnership? It is important to distinguish between a trading partnership and a non-trading partnership because the members of a non-trading partnership usually have considerably less apparent authority than the partners in a trading partnership. Question six, for what purposes may a partnership be formed? A partnership may be formed for the purpose of operating a lawful trade, business, or profession for profit. Question seven, what is a limited liability partnership? A limited liability partnership is a partnership registered with the appropriate state office whose members take an active role in managing the business but do not have unlimited liability for business debts and normally no liability for other partners' misconduct or negligence. Question eight, explain the two reasons for the importance of the limited liability company as a form of business organization. The limited liability form of business organization offers limited liability to members and allows members to choose how the company will be classified for tax purposes. Question nine, what is the difference between a member 
and a manager of a limited liability company. A member is an owner of the limited liability company. A manager is an individual who manages the company's operations. Question 10, when will a court pierce the corporate veil of a limited liability company? A court will pierce the corporate veil if one or more of the members fail to treat the limited liability company as a separate entity. Chapter 32, Creation and Operation of a Partnership. Our first learning objective is that a partnership results from a contract, express or implied, written or oral. A partner owns co-partners the duty to exercise loyalty and good faith, to use reasonable care and skill to conform to the partnership contract, to keep records, and to inform the other partners about matters relating to the partnership. Every partner has the right to participate in management, to inspect the books, to reimbursement, to withdraw advances, and to withdraw profits. A partner has liability for contracts, torts, and crimes. Profits and losses are shared in the proportion specified in the partnership agreement. If the partnership agreement does not specify a ratio, profits and losses will be shared equally. A partnership results from a contract, express or implied, just as all other business commitments result from a contract. The articles of partnership should set forth all the terms of the partnership contract and other pertinent data. The Uniform Partnership Act provides that proof of a person received a share of profits is a prima facie evidence of a partnership. A partnership that is inferred from the acts of the parties is commonly known as a partnership by estoppel. A firm name is not a legal necessity or requirement for a partnership, but it is desirable. A partner is a tenant or owner in a partnership. A surviving partner does not get full ownership upon the death of the other partner and is not as free to sell the property. Partners have at least five primary responsibilities. They have the duty to exercise good faith because a relationship with principal and agent exists. A duty to work for the firm, abide by majority vote, keep records, inform the other partners of matters relating to the partnership. Partners also have five well-defined rights. The right to participate in the management of the business unless they have relinquished this right by contract. The right to inspect the firm's books. The right to reimbursement when that partner has paid a debt of the firm from personal funds. And the right to withdraw advances or profits. Partners have three types of liability. Contractual liabilities, liability for torts, and liability for crimes. Partners are jointly liable for all contractual liabilities and jointly and severally liable for tort liabilities. Withdrawing partners are liable for all debts up to the time of withdrawal. New partners are liable under the Uniform Partnership Act for new debts and for old debts only to the extent of their investment. In the absence of an agreement providing otherwise, a partner in an ordinary trading partnership has the implied powers to compromise and release 
a claim against a third party to receive payments and to give receipts in the name of the firm to employ or discharge agents and employees for the business to draw and endorse checks to make notes and to accept drafts to ensure the property of the partnership to cancel insurance policies or to give proof of loss and to collect the proceeds also to buy goods on credit and sell goods in the regular course of business the five acts that partners have no implied power to perform are to assign the assets of the firm for the benefit of creditors to endorse a negotiable instrument as an accommodation to submit a partnership controversy to arbitration to discharge a personal debt by set off against a debt due the firm or to dispose of the goodwill of the business profits and losses are shared equally unless otherwise agreed in the partnership agreement let's go over our chapter 32 uh, summary questions question one is it possible for two or more people to create a partnership unintentionally a partnership may be created when two or more parties who do not have an intention to form a partnership act in such a way as to lead third parties to believe that a partnership exists but question two under what circumstances will the law prevent individuals who are not actually partners from denying a partnership exists the law will recognize a partnership by estoppel when individuals give a false impression that a partnership exists and third persons will be harmed by their conduct question three how can a person overcome prima facie evidence of a partnership prima facie evidence of a partnership can be overcome by showing that the share of profits received represented wages or payment of a debt interest on a loan rent or the purchase price of a business or goods question four why must a partner keep diligent records of transactions related to the partnership each partner must be able to give an accounting to the other partners for business transactions such as purchases sales commission payments and receipts the accounting should be based on written records question five under the uniform partnership act is partnership property owned in the name of the partnership or in the name of the partners under the uniform partnership act partnership property whether real or personal may be owned either in the names of the partners or in the name of the firm question six what can personal creditors of one partner do to try to collect the partner's debt from the partnership to try to collect a partner's debt from the partnership personal creditors of one partner can ask a court to order that payments due the debtor partner from the partnership be made to the creditors they also can force the sale of a debtor partner's interest in the partnership question seven what must a partner do if personal interest or advantage conflicts with the advantage of the partnership if the personal interest or advantage of the partner conflicts with the advantage of the partnership 
the partner has a duty to put the firm's interest above personal advantage. Question 8. What type of agreement is required to decide to make a basic change in the character of a partnership or its agreement? Unanimous consent of the partners is required to make a decision involving a basic change in the character of the enterprise or the partnership agreement. Such decisions include an assignment for the benefit of creditors, disposition of the firm's goodwill, actions that would make carrying on the firm's business impossible, confession of a judgment, or the submission of a firm claim to arbitration. Question 9. To what extent is a general partner liable for enforceable debts against the partnership? A general partner has individual personal liability for all enforceable debts against the partnership. Question 10. How will partnership profits and losses be shared if the partnership agreement does not fix the ratio? If the partnership agreement does not fix the ratio of sharing the profits and the losses, they will be shared equally. Chapter 33, Dissolution of a Partnership. Our learning objectives, objective one, dissolution can occur by acts of the partners, court decree, or by operation of law. Dissolution by acts of the partners includes agreement, withdrawal, or alienation, and expulsion by court decree includes insanity, incapacity, misconduct of a partner, and futility. Dissolution by operation of law includes death, bankruptcy, and illegality. Objective two, a court may order dissolution of a partnership when a partner is judiciously declared insane or of unsound mind. If a partner develops an incapacity that makes it impossible for the partner to perform the services to the partnership that the partnership agreement contemplated, a court may dissolve the partnership. If one member of a partnership engages in misconduct prejudicial to the successful continuance of the business, or if it is clear that the partnership cannot make a profit, the partnership can be dissolved by judicial decree. Objective three, the law operates to dissolve a partnership upon the death of a partner, bankruptcy of a partner, or the partnership, and a change in the law that makes the business illegal. Question four, or objective four, after dissolution by an act of the partners, third persons who have done business with the firm must be given notice of the dissolution. The general public can be given notification by publication. No notice need be given when the dissolution is by operation of law or judicial decree. If one member of a going partnership withdraws for any reason, the partnership relation is dissolved, but the business may continue to operate for the purpose of winding up its affairs. A partnership may be dissolved by act of the partners by agreement. At the time the partnership agreement is formed, the partners may fix the time when the partnership relation will cease. Withdrawal or alienation. The withdrawal of one partner at any time and for any reason dissolves the partnership. The alienation of a partner's interest, either by a voluntary sale or an involuntary sale, 
does not dissolve the partnership. Expulsion. The partnership agreement should contain a clause providing for the expulsion of a member. A court may issue a decree dissolving the partnership for the insanity of a partner or the incapacity of a partner, misconduct of one member of a partnership, or futility of the partnership. A partnership may be dissolved by operation of laws such as death, bankruptcy of one of the partners, illegality of the type of business. Historically, dissolution of a partnership meant liquidation of the business. Only existing contracts and new minor contracts reasonably necessary for completion of existing contracts could be performed. The revised Uniform Partnership Act permits a partnership to continue if the remaining partners buy out the departing partner's share. When a partnership has been dissolved, notice of dissolution must be given except to those who were partners when the partnership was dissolved by operation of law, when the partnership was dissolved by judicial decree, when a dormant or a secret partner retired, after the termination of a solvent partnership, the partners are entitled to distribute the assets remaining after creditors are paid as follows. Partners who have advanced money to the firm or have incurred liabilities are entitled to reimbursement. Each partner is next entitled to the return of the capital contributed. Any assets remaining are distributed equally unless there is an agreement to the contrary. When a firm sustains a loss, the loss will be shared equally unless there is an agreement to the contrary. Chapter Review Questions Question 1. Must all partnership activity cease after a partnership dissolves? Not all partnership activity ceases after a partnership dissolves since it continues to exist for the limited purpose of winding up or cleaning up its outstanding obligations and business affairs and distributing its remaining assets to creditors and partners. Question 2. How are partnership assets distributed after dissolution? After dissolution, creditors of the partnership must be paid first. The remaining assets are then distributed among the partners. Question 3. If no date for the dissolution of a partnership is fixed at the time the partnership is formed, when may the partners dissolve it? If no date for the dissolution of a partnership is fixed at the time the partnership is formed, the partners may, by mutual agreement, dissolve the partnership at any time. Question 4. Does the purchaser of a partner's interest in a partnership become a partner by the purchase? The purchaser of a partner's interest in a partnership does not become a partner by the purchase, but such a purchaser has a right to the capital and profits of the selling partner. Question 5. What should the expulsion clause of a partnership agreement contain? The expulsion clause of a partnership agreement should spell out clearly the acts for which a member may be expelled and the method of settlement for such a partner's interest. Question 6. Does the temporary incapacity of a partner justify a court decree dissolving the partnership? No. The temporary incapacity of a partner does not justify a court decree dissolving the partnership. A temporary inability of one partner to perform duties constitutes one of the risks 
that the other partners assumed when they formed the partnership. Question 7. How does a partnership notify customers and creditors of dissolution? A partnership usually gives customers and creditors notice of dissolution by mail. Question 8. Does the death of a partner always dissolve a partnership? Death of a partner does not always dissolve a partnership because the partnership agreement can provide that it shall not be dissolved upon a partner's death. Question 9. How is a partnership dissolved when its primary business activity becomes illegal? If a partnership's business becomes illegal, the partnership will be dissolved automatically by operation of law. Question 10. What is the potential liability if notice of dissolution is not given to third persons who have done business with the partnership? If notice of dissolution is not given to third persons who have done business with the partnership, every member of the old firm may be held liable for the acts of the former partners that are committed within the scope of the business. Uh, please email me the answer to chapter 33 question 10.